With over 500,000 trees and shrubs already planted and growing, it's easy to forget you are in the city. We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City Way. and welcome to Real Talk with me, Anele on SABC3, where the stage is yours. So, how many times have you procrastinated and not gotten things done because you use the excuse that, I just, you know, I just don't have enough time. The saying goes, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. It's about how you use your time effectively. My guest today knows all about living life to the fullest every hour of his 24. He's built portfolios as a brand strategist for some of the biggest brands across Africa and the world. He is a revered international speaker, appeared on all local and numerous platforms, including CNN, the BBC. To top that off, he's been instrumental in election campaigns that put two African presidents into power. Now that's far, right? He is Tebe Etsile Ikala Feng, the founder and group CEO of Brand Leadership Group. And to those who really know him, when he walks in, they say, what? The shield has arrived. The shield has arrived. The shield has arrived, right? Tebe Etsile, I love the fact that you said, because it's, it's an old age debate, this thing. Who's a brand? Are people brands? Are brands brands? Are products brands? And you were like, but when you got a name, that was, was your brand. That was the beginning of your branding process. Because when they give you the name, uh. they said, Anel. They uh, says, that's it. That's it. We are, we are, we, we are happy with what, we, with what we've delivered here. Uh -huh. so, so you are of the, not even impression, because impression means that you're likely to change your mind. You are of the creed that you are, you, you are a shield that is arriving at all times. Well, you know, I think when my, because I'm, I'm the first grandson, oh. uh, the first grandson, I think my, my grandparents says, this is the guy who's going to hold the name, the company, the, the, the family name uh, high. Uh, this is the guy who's going to protect us. And this is the guy. So somehow, you know, uh, you always end up being what you are supposed to be. I think it's Muhammad Ali once said, the ah. older you become, the more you become who you're supposed to be. I like the fact that you called your family a company. You like Donald ah, Trump. I was about to just say. <laughs> you know when Donald Trump calls America a company, the United States of America is a great company. We're like, uh, Donald, country. Trump. Country. country. Yeah. And quickly, sidestep now, your tie. Everybody has been going on about this tie. This tie is absolutely amazing. You say you were wearing it in Switzerland last week and you were giving a talk and even them who make the best chocolates in the world, they were taken up by this chocolate man who's got an was, amazing tie. They were zooming onto my tie. <laughs> and people said to me, Tim is an amazing speaker. Uh -huh. But my goodness, that tie. Let's talk about the tie. I was like, it's African, it's uh -huh. beaded, made by Africans, made by hand. 100 rand. I'm blown away by it. Totally blown away. Totally. I, I also want one for myself. So what I love about you is you, you own your failures, right? Because you're just like, ah, it was just a part and parcel of something that I was becoming. And you said, everyone fails at Vitz. <laughs> <laughs> I failed at Vitz. You failed. Vitz gives you the edge. Vitz pushed you over the edge. Well, I know a lot of people who failed at Vitz. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, you know, in, in, the, in the late 90s, 80s, uh, early 90s, all black kids failed at VITS uh. because all had to pre uh, repeat one class or another, maybe not, maybe not all, but it, you know, there was that thing there, we party too much, we come from small towns, they came by, we, we arrive here, uh. and people says, my goodness, this life, your freedom, because yeah. you know what happens with freedom, you don't study, but sometimes we study, but also around that time, actually, there was another factor. The other factor the was the, the, the unrest, but not only the unrest, that a lot of black kids sometimes were failed. So, but I, I don't think, I, I think I fell in between the two. Mm. I think I fell between the too happy <laughs> and the two, and, and also then the excuse of being failed because you are black. I, I think so. I love there. the fact that you own your balance of being too happy. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? When else would you say that you, you, you went home and you said to yourself, wow, I failed at that? Well, I hardly ever really say I failed at that. I just always get up and say, 
that is not the standards that I expect of myself. I can do better than this. Because if you look at it as failure, mm. then you begin to look down on you. But if you look at it as just a hiccup or just a misstep, then you then have to reload and, and do better. That's how I always look at it. I always look at it, every failure, every misstep mm. uh, makes you better. You can always get up wiser, smarter, better. That is, I like that. That is not the standard that I am used to, I've said for myself. So are you very hard on yourself? I'm, I'm not hard on myself. I am who I am. Because I think within our DNA, uh. we are who we are. Some people are going to be A students. Uh, some are going to be C students. I've always been top of my class. You know, the rest of my school are always top of my class, mm. except for sub A and sub B, because I think all of us are dumb then. Yeah, and, no, you're uh, not supposed to know anything. You're not supposed to know anything. anything. I mean, and, but the rest of my, class, my, my school year, I was top of the class. So it was almost part of my DNA that I expect to be the best at whatever mm. I do. But without thinking about it, I never conscientize, I never really think about it. I just get up and say, I'm expected to be the, I expect of myself to be the very best at what I do. I need to apply myself with somebody who expect the best of themselves. Mm. So you are this branding authority. And I think when, you know, when you speak about marketing and branding and just forming and molding of messaging when it comes to uh, brands, people, you, you're the go-to guy. If you had to go back to, as a kid, were you the one who was watching all the adverts? It's not inside, it's on top. Yeah, and then you were like reciting them. Was there always an affiliation between you and something that was getting sold to you? I was always the one they come to for advice on anything. So I was always the one who came for extra, who they came to for extra classes on mathematics. Okay. They came to extra classes on science, extra classes on English. I was head boy. So I was always the one they come to. So the idea of consulting, of advising, of all those has always mm. been a part of, if you will, uh, who, uh, who I am. But and that's but your I, execution. But I, ex but I accepted it. I, I never really thought much about it. And the idea of brands, by the way, I had no clue what brands are. I just knew the things that I love and the things that are uh, that work for me and the fact that it's called brands probably started mm. when i started working for colgate in new york then that's probably the only time when i said oh brands yeah i mean brand management i guess this thing is called a brand i just grew up calling it Col colgate so what did you study then so uh, when i arrived i first arrived in the u.s um uh and uh in uh, 1989 yeah. and uh and I, I dropped out of it remember out, out, out of accounting as we all do yeah uh, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and you can find someone to balance your okay, books for you. so, <laughs> so i arrived there and i remember you know we had three weeks in the u.s uh, in, in in ohio and we we're at a, at a nightclub with a lot of south african uh, academic exiles and political exiles uh and we were all there and we we're dancing and some guy says to me ah Tebe, you're also here he's a guy i knew from it's like, what you oh, coming to do? <laughs> what you coming to do here? I'm like, dude, I'm coming to finish my accounting degree. He's like, oh, Tebe, how's joining? You don't look like an accountant. Oh, wow. And he says to me, you are more like a marketer. You're like that guy that, because you know, when I was at Vits, when I was at high school, everywhere else, I generally had very good rapport, I had very good interpersonal skills mm. uh, with anybody across all levels. And he says to me, you're like a marketer. So, you know, and, uh, and I was like, marketer, whatever, that means only mm. dumb people do marketing. It's too easy to get into, you know, I'm thinking accounting, it is just clever. It's the one um, you do when the course doesn't take you. Like you want to do medicine, <laughs> then you don't make medical school. Like, okay, let me do marketing. Let me do marketing. Yeah. Yeah. The barriers to entry are so low. <laughs> Anybody is a marketer. <laughs> <laughs> no, and so, then you end up, yeah. And then, and then I ended up, uh, the, uh, and I ended up as a past, the best marketing student um, um, at the end of my course. Well, I started in accounting front row, mm. and I ended up in, in, and I ended up in marketing front row because we swapped the roles. Okay. Uh, by the time I finished, I was named best marketing student by the American marketing students. I started working for Colgate, uh. came to South Africa, marketing, 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 Nike, uh, marketing South Africa, marketing for the continent. So I've just been. That's all I know. Do you find that brands call you, like, I mean, you just said, you know, the Nike, the Colgate, do you find that brands call you when they're in trouble or when they want to strengthen their position? It's a combination. Uh, well, I must say, uh, uh, Colgate did not call me. It was one of the 80 in, uh, uh, applications I made uh, as a student, <laughs> stamping, writing, application. Dear sir, Dear sir to whom it may concern. It may concern. <laughs> and uh, out of the 80 that I applied, 79 did not concern. <laughs> <laughs> no, only one of them said, you look interesting, you let's like, talk to I've you. I've got teeth, I can sell Colgate. <laughs> Correctly. So, uh, so, um, so, so I, th I think it's a combination. Uh. I mean, I've had so many different approaches. You know, I've worked on over.
over 100 brands uh, across the continent. So you can imagine uh, some brands call you when they're starting something, mm -hmm. some call you when they want to change, some call you, you know, with, with politics it's always we're in trouble. Mm. Uh, we need to win, elect, mm. we need to win. Can mm. you help us? Uh, with other brands is, um, you know, Free State, when Free State, when the kids uh, urinated in the porch, you remember oh, that? Oh, yes, UFS. UFS, yeah. and then, you know, there was a big crisis for the for the university. It was also a catalyst for them to say, maybe we need to rebrand. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I got there, some this of the... could go either way. So some of the things that we had to do, that we ended up doing, rather, took out the gunpowder, which was in the, in the, in the identity, which symbolized uh, white people overcoming black people. I oh. uh, took out the word God out of their entire positioning, because we said, the university that's funded 75, 80% by, by government, cannot be just for people who believe in God. God. But you can imagine the... The, 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 the uh, ties the, that the, you had to like... Correct. Prior I mean, a false plug. I think it's false plus The local paper published a whole article. It says that guy from from Joburg has come here to change our university. Uh, so, so brands call you for for different reasons. They brand, they're launching a new brand. Uh, they're in trouble, like UFS. I say, like UNISA. I did a whole merger of all those universities. Uh. Uh, or like Transnet when they were changing when they when they were getting rid of uh, of public transport and just focusing uh. on rail. Uh, so, so a range of of reasons uh, that we get called for. Uh, so of course, yeah. So basically, now that I've set the scene for you, he's like the brains behind everything you thought just happens naturally, like things are just there. But meanwhile, he's there working behind it. Life experiences and applying the lessons learned have earned him the honor of being one of the 100 most influential Africans by New African Magazine. Mm -hmm. More with Tebe after the break. <laughs> And welcome back to Real Talk. So here's a line you've heard many times. I am an African. We all know the famous speech of deep-rooted pride and conviction by our former president, President Tabombeki. Iron Lady of Liberia, President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, once said, Africa is not poor, it's poorly managed. And today, I'm with Tebe Ikalafeng, who is, you are one of the people who are constantly pushing the African agenda. You're just like, I heard you speak and I loved it um, because they said, how do you build a brand? You're like, well, you're authentically you and you don't change your story because you change your story, you're going to trip and then you're going to expose yourself that that's not who you really were. So what are we as Africans doing right and wrong when it comes to, you know, becoming brands. Well, you know, exactly you say, you know, I'm very passionate about ensuring that as Africans, we own our identity. I think Fela Kuti says, if you don't, if you identify with Africa, then you'll have an identity. Uh -huh. So you must identify the continent because think about it, who can do Africa better than Africans? Mm -hmm. Only Africans. Mm. So what mo what we do, what we try and do most of the time is we are, we are so consumed by trying to please the West and uh, or, the, or, or the East and all those. To make them feel comfortable. To make them feel comfortable with who we are. Mm. Starting with our names, as you said at the mm. break, that uh, if you say your name is Tebe Zilo or Tebe Dela, how do you I'll say that? I'll call you T. I'll call you T, because <laughs> it's much easier to say. <laughs> and you, you, you're like, but how come if your name is Mary, I don't call you M? Yeah. Or David, I don't call you D? D yeah. uh, I just I learn how to say your name, because naturally I'm not inclined to be able to say David or Mary or Jacob. My little I need to sister learn. says, if you can say Chochowski, you can say Tebe. You can say Tebe, <laughs> indeed, uh, indeed. So I think what we're doing wrong is we don't own our identity, or rather we are too afraid of who we are. And mm. who we are is our only distinction. Because as an African, you can't go claim ancestral uh, passport in, in, in Australia or in England or in America. Are. This is the only place it's your beginning, it's your end. Matter of fact, you can be anywhere in the world. You could be born in London uh, and be dark as me. On the street, when people point at you, they just see an African. Mm. So the thing that we then need to do is we need to look at it and says, as an African or somebody of an African extract, isn't it something that I need to own? Because it is who I am and it is what makes, makes me distinctive and what gives me an identity in the world. So when you find that you're going into helping brands out and companies, this message of Africa, do you, do you sometimes have to park it at the door because that's just not what they want to hear? Or do you find ways to infiltrate it into... Because, I mean, if they're calling you, they really want you. Correct. And that's what you feel. Correct. So do you make sure that you carry Correct. this message along with you? 
Well, I mean, part of our, part of our, our, our vision at, at, at Brand Leadership, our, our company, is really to help build great brands in Africa or great African brands. Because, mm. uh, you know, we say with us, uh, there's, an, uh, there's, an Af there's Africa inside everything that we do. Mm -hmm. So what we try and do is we try and say, what is that uh, African insight that we can in, in, in integrate into your, into your brand? What is that we can bring into your DNA, or rather that we can take out of your DNA mm -hmm. and, and, and highlight? So no, when you come to us, you should expect that uh, somehow we are going to, uh, to, to give you a club and give you reality and says, you are in Africa. You are serving African consumers. Speak to them in the way that they can relate to you. But then do you not have to, when you do that, do you not have to then find the similarities, right? Because yes, it's, it's, it's great to celebrate the differences, like why we're African and why the West is the West and the East is the East, right? And I, I find that the East does a really good job at sticking to the at East. At sticking to it. Yeah, are. like, you know, I, I feel like we, we could learn more from the East than the West, if we I'm could learn, sense. We can learn a lot from the East. Yeah. We can learn a lot from uh, South America. Yeah. Do you know, I judge, I judge Red Dot globally every year. Yeah. Uh, and it's the, it's the biggest global uh, uh, design, uh, 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 design award in the world. Yeah. And every time I go there and I see some of the work that comes from the East and that comes from South America, I'm like, how? These people are not trying to fit into the yeah. West. They are trying to assert who they are. Mm. Our job is to assert who we are. So, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, every year I publish, uh, I do a research across the continent on the top 100 best brands in Africa. Okay. And the problem that we have is only 17% of the brands that Africans admire are African. So in other words, there's an 83% rejection of who we are. So that's a problem because if you reject who you are, then you'll never be able to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to build success out, mm. of, out of that. And if you think from a branding perspective, if 83% of the brands that we admire are non-African, it means that 83% of the profits that we make go out of the continent. So if the money goes out of the continent, no wonder we are begging and, and, and borrowing. Uh-huh. Junk status, maybe that's where you should go next. Have you ever considered working for the Treasury Department? Well, I mean, we all work for the Treasury Department <laughs> because we all pay tax. <laughs> <laughs> so, I am an employee too. <laughs> so, Don't worry, Pravin, we're in there. <laughs> so, we, 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 uh, so, you know, I mean, it's a very challenging uh, uh, situation where we're in as, 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 a as, as a country. But now think about South Africa, that for many years up to 1990, we were actually an isolated country. Uh -huh. So if you think about uh, what isolation sometimes does, mm. uh, isolation sometimes forces you uh, to think, uh, to be creative. So if you look at the rest of the continent, while the rest of the world rejected uh, apartheid South Africa, during the time apartheid South Africa created a lot of the brands that you see. So now that's a lesson that we can learn from, that during this isolation... When you isolate yourself, you can actually build something strong. Well, because you all have nothing else but yourself so to, rely to, to rely on. So on. now we've got a... We, 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 now in the junk stasis, nobody wants to invest here or nobody wants to, to bring money here. It's, an, it's actually an opportunity rather than a problem for us as Africans, as South Africans, mm. because what it's Says, it says, as a South African, now that you can reach out to nobody else, can you reach out to yourself? So we are going to become more creative. We are going to become more self-resourceful. Self -resourceful, and we, out of this will come a great, uh, a great and an even better South Africa. So speaking of you doing things ar across the continent, you were instrumental. Uh, is it John Atomals um, in putting him into power as the Ghanaian president? Who calls you to say that? Like, I just need to know, like, the channels. Like, when your phone rings, what does it say there on the caller screen, ID? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, because it's, it's what country is this now? <laughs> okay, okay, so it's plus, what, 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 what? It's, and then yeah, when you answer, who on the other side, uh, who says hello, Tim? Well, I mean, uh, you know, when you're working with presidents in the beginning... You I don't do, know, you, I've never worked with presidents. Oh, <laughs> 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 In the beginning, uh, there'll always be a middle person who comes in. So uh -huh. obviously in, in that space and many other spaces, we work across uh, Francophone and Anglophone uh, Africa in the area of, 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 of helping presidents and all mm. those. It was always the first, the first caller is a person, not the person, uh, okay. not the president not themselves. Not the guy. Not the guy themselves. Uh. But of course, in order to deliver a successful pres a presidency, you need the guy. You need to meet uh, so the guy. To be, so yeah, of course, when that call came in in uh, 2007 or 2008, uh, it came from a middle person. So we went over there. It was an interesting campaign, by the way, because when we arrived there, uh, he's a professor, he's got a PhD in, in law, uh, well-respected former vice president, uh, great uh, the, a, a party, mm -hmm. but they had no idea and they had no money. So the job was, we have no idea on how to win the elections and we have no money. Help us win these elections. So do you base yourself there during the, the course, of the, uh, course of the election? Well, you know, our continent is 55 countries. 
So and uh, and I base myself in an aeroplane between uh, between countries. So 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 we'll have people working there, people working there, um, uh, in and out of the countries. Because I think if I, I think somebody said to me yesterday, I must suffer from ADD. ADD mm -hmm. well, I, I can't remember what the word is. He says your attention deficit. You know, yes, attention it's, deficit it's disorder. Dis disorder. Yeah. He yeah. says because you're here, there, everywhere else. I said that's. I mean, that's how you're gonna get around. But I get energized by not being one place at any point mm. in time, by going from this place, that place, that place. Because again, as you travel. Uh, you become better, you become, uh, you, you open your mind, yeah. you know. I've been to obviously over 100 cities around the world, so, and I've done more than the, half the continent. So, so all those lessons uh, make you a, a better thinker and a better marketer. I'm fascinated about this presidential campaign. So did you look at him and say, you need to stop wearing those shoes? Were the, were the comments well, like interesting. that? Well, yes, yes, as a matter of fact, I mean, you're right, because part of building a, a, part of building a brand, it's, a, it's not just the, the visual stuff and the, and the verbal, it, it's, it's both the visual as well as the verbal, because there needs to be an alignment uh -huh. between, uh, between what you say uh, and how and how and that how, you look, how you that talk, aligns because your body talks before you your talk. body talks before you talk. You know, uh. fifty five percent of the impressions people have of you are based on what they see first, and only seven percent on the content. So now you can imagine the first thing you need to deal with as well is that. But we did everything. We did uh, train the president on how to project himself, how to speak abroad, abroad broadcasters from all over uh, the continent. It trained him in a room. Uh, we looked at his dress. We said, "Ah, Mr. President, you're a professor, well respected, speak well, but you need to come down to yes, to our to people, layman's to layman's levels to the, because to, those are the people that vote for because you. Because they can't they can't vote for you in a suit and a tie. Then you will not be like them. Um, that's why, matter of fact, even if you think about you in our country, when uh, when Tabun Beki started uh, uh, going door to door in Atalapanzi, mm. and people says, "That's not like you." Mm -mm. Uh, but, but, but when my when you wear the bomber jacket, I'm like, <laughs> like where's the tie? <laughs> it's like, this yeah. like you. So you have to understand that your message has to align uh, with, 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 your, with, with your image. So of course you do all those things. But we did everything uh, from television to uh, public to speaking to speech writing to the campaign uh, to the uh, whole activation. Matter of fact, when we launched uh, the campaign, I remember sometime in May in 2008, the opposition called the press conference and they said it's impossible. Who revived them? Ah! Uh, clear. Uh, this is why people are googling his net worth. We're going to talk about that when we come back. So there's still another week for you, however, to enter our weekly e-gift card voucher giveaway. 5,000 Rand. Details on the screen. We'll be back in a minute. What a fascinating conversation. Thank you so much for staying with us. I'm with Tebe Kalafeng, a man who wears, and stylishly at that, so many hats and successfully too, respected as a global African brand authority. He's been recognized as one of the top 10 thinkers in marketing amongst business decision makers in Southern Africa and was called one of the top 10 Africans to follow on Twitter. Oh, way. Uh, he was called this by the How We Made It in Africa. Speaking of Twitter, the one thing that can build a brand and destroy it at the same What is your take? Did you have to kind of shift gear yourself in your expertise and how you work with brands when social media became what it is? Well, you know, the thing is, p people get confused with, with social media. They think social media is something else. But ah. social media is you. So whatever you put out into the world, through social media, through your mouth, yeah. uh, through your gossip, it's all part of what who you are. And uh, so when people get this thing, they think it's something else that I can just quickly put on the site and then bring back. So of course now brands have to be very, very careful yeah. because now what happens now uh, in the world is uh, I think you've seen many examples, some staff member press a, uh, 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 press a send on what they were thinking themselves. And now and the forget staff member and the brand are two different, because uh, 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 what you must remember is that as an organization as well, you have a personality and you've got what you, you have yeah. a set of values, what you stand for. So your Twitter must be aligned with that. So, so that's, why, that's why when you curate your, 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 your messages, that's why when people are managing your message on your behalf, it is not about them. It is always All about, about you. you. And so. I find that brands are like, oh, no, sorry, um, our, one of our staff sent that. I'm like, whoa. No, no, no. no, no. no. So you've got the wrong staff in, in your company. Because, exactly. Because the stuff that you bring into your organization, the people that you employ are supposed to be as well a microcosm or, or rather a representation or ambassadors of who you are. So if that's how they speak, it means in your organization, you've got people who are not aligned with your organization. Yeah, and there's a disjointed there's like, a disjoint, messaging system correct. there. Because 
and you're not managing the messaging yourself because you also must manage it. What was the last brand you were blown away by? Like they did something, you were like, I okay. slow clip. So, <laughs> well, you, you know, as, um, I, 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 I'm always uh, surrounded by so many interesting brands and some of them are quite old, you know. I still think what the people at Mbesa have done in Kenya uh. is phenomenal. Because this- Tell us about uh, that. So Mbesa is the, money, is, 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 is the mobile money uh, a payment solution out of Kenya, uh, which is, uh, I think it's about maybe 10 years or so old. Uh, but what they've done is 70% of the GDP of Kenya runs through uh, the phone. So people pay for their taxis, they pay for their electricity, they pay for everything, they transfer money uh, with their phone with this mobile money transfer. Because what they realize uh, in Kenya, for example, that a lot of the, um, much of the country being rural, uh, are, are, are people were struggling to send money from the urban areas uh, to the rural areas. But the one thing everybody had was a mobile phone. So I thought, and, and, they, and, and they said, let's use a phone instead of building bricks and mortar like we have maybe here in South Africa. Yes. Let us use the overhead phone. Overhead banks. Uh, overhead and all tools. those things. Slips. So they do everything through the mobile. That is I amazing. still think it's the most amazing but thing. But Kenya's the very progressive. Tech-wise, tech wise, ahead of them. They pay for their electricity, they pay for their taxes, everything through mobile. I also think, you know, uh, what uh, what the people in Ethiopia have done with coffee is amazing. Because now coffee's always been an African thing. Mm. Uh, from Kenya to Ethiopia to Uganda. Mm. Uh, those are, you know, if you will, the centers of coffee uh, in Africa. So the guys in uh, in Ethiopia, they realize that they've been selling coffee to Starbucks, let's say, for example, uh, for a buck, and Starbucks was making uh, 12, 12, or 12 yeah. bucks out of it. And they said there's a disconnect somewhere. Somebody's getting Let's screwed. Let's find that $11. But we need to find the $11. And when they went to the Starbucks people, the people says, well, the $11 is our brand. They say, our brand gives us a leverage to charge that much. Yeah. Then the guy said, Ethiopia, and, this, and the guy said, but it's our coffee that you are selling. They're like, no, no, we just bags. We just buy bags of coffee from you. Mm -hmm. So what they then they then rebranded, and they gave each type of coffee a different name, and they package it differently. When our friends from Starbucks came back and says, coffee, they said, 12 bucks, please. And they it's said, our brand. <laughs> it's our brand that you buy. <laughs> so I think those examples are always mind-blowing. Or even a small company like Iswara from uh, Swati Martin here, who's from Cote d'Ivoire, mm -hmm. but lives here in South Africa. Do you know, I was walking around uh, Selfridges in London and Harrods, and I'm seeing on the shelves, and I'm seeing a coffee, I mean tea, mm. from South Africa, from South Africa. And I'm like, that's my girl, Swadi. Yes. She's got tea in Selfridges and Harrods, uh, in Galerie Laf Lafayette in, in France. I said, this is amazing. It's, to me, those ideas amaze me. The, the brands which, uh, which impress me, which, mm. uh, which really excite me, are those brands which are not afraid of their African roots. Because uh, remember how, 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 how Mpesa, was, uh, Mpesa is based. Mpesa mm. is based on African insight mm. that my people can rural, rural areas and urban areas, the money needs to travel. That's African insight. Now, people are only thinking about bringing Africa into this thing. Basabat Klamanga, oh, putting in Kentes and putting no. in. Uh, no, no, no. It's the, the problem solving. The problem, the problem solving, solving that speaks to you know the people at, at Samsung do it very well. You know yeah. Samsung we we rated Samsung the number one um, our most admired brand in Africa. Oh, nice. And and the reason we, and, and what Samsung has done well they've got that built for Africa initiative because the CEO of Samsung said to me I said to him where have you been in Africa? He said I've been to all the 54 uh, 54 countries except one. I'm like yo you're more African than I am. <laughs> I said and what did you learn? He says I sat in their rooms. Uh, and, uh, and the lights went off. He says, I didn't say, oh, this place is rural. He says, instead I said, hmm. How do we keep the lights on? How do we keep the lights on? And he says, he went out during the day and he saw the sun and he says, but they've got solar power. Let's build solar-based products for Africa. So now those ideas are going out into the world. The same with Mpesa ideas, which is another idea in Europe, it's used in Europe. Mm. The number of transactions in Mpesa, by the way, are greater than all the mobile, all the number of transactions in mobile money Worldwide. worldwide and that's coming out of Kenya so to me the ideas which impress me which always leave me wow are those ideas which show how Africa is a is a creative and resourceful uh, country and those which show uh, how people don't make excuses in Africa but rather use the conditions of Africa to create the shield has arrived indeed listen thank you so much this was enlightening 
Thank you. I, I, I'm, I think I'm officially obsessed with you now. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I really am. I just, I want to listen to you <laughs> talk all the time. <laughs> Do you, you like read bedtime stories that you sell on iTunes? Maybe that we can just download and be like, let me hear my time at bedtime story. Uh, <laughs> you should consider it. I must do that, right? There's money there. Uh, there's yeah. money there. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolute pleasure. What, Thank you for having me. Oh, what a pleasure. What a pleasure. Listen, after the break, we continue to be African. We go back to the days of the cool timer, Fanko Fifi, the legendary Ken Timber is going to be under a hot discussion. Stay with us. And welcome back to Real Talk. Throughout the month of May, the Market Theatre have got a special body of work on stage. Ken Timber was a talented writer who produced historic work, including House of Truth and Sophia Town. He was labeled a rebel of the apartheid regime, and a lot of his body of work was destroyed. One story, the suit continues to live on. It was staged for the first time at the Market Theatre in 1994, and to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Ken Timber's passing, it's back on again. Joining me now is the thespian, an artistic director James Ngawa a narrator and actor in the play Lindani Ngozi gentlemen thank you for joining me thank you very much thank for you. giving us the funniest thing I had Selo Makangumbe here the other day and obviously he's also got a little bit of an obsession going with yeah. Ken Temba and he says when he first did the suit he almost got to levels of depression right because it's a pretty depressing it's a powerful story yeah. but look it is a bit depressing do you find that it, it, it pulls you in the trenches of darkness when I was directing it, I found that every day when rehearsals end, I've got a terrace in my house and I would go and sort of like hibernate there because you are um, trying to find an, a, a, a way that will help the story unfold in a very beautiful mm. manner for, for audiences. Um, and, and yet at the same time, you, you are hit by the hopelessness in the Man. story. And, and I always say I know, that the suit is one of those stories that will completely dupe you as an audience. On, on paper, you could, you could read it whilst, whilst you, you're cooking. Yeah. You know, but to pick it up from the page and, and put it on stage was the most, one of the most difficult pieces of theatre I've had to direct. Oh, wow. Cause, and it's also like, it's, a, it's got such dramatic pauses and such silences where... And, and, and it's a small cast as well. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a basically a non-existent cast. Mm -hmm. Now you, as, as the actor in there, did you find that there were certain elements that you had to keep in you? Like, you know what, when this was first written, this play, there's something in the original that I, I, I must make sure that I bring to the stage all the time. What's that? Well, the, 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 the James made it clear to us that as, as the storytellers, mm. we need to try and detach ourselves from uh, some of the emotional rise that takes place in the in oh, the story oh. so 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 that we become storytellers and and not try to immerse ourselves in the moments uh, that oh, are perfect. that but, uh, being brought better, in by yeah. brought in by the <laughs> actors you know because they've got their own up and down emotional levels and all that so we need to let them go and we tell our own story so basically, you wanted them to just be the vehicles. Yeah, you know, and, 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 and there are moments where we open the door mm. and they come with emotions flooding. But I kept saying to, 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 to the three storytellers, it's almost like each one of them believes that their version of the story is, is the, the right best one. Mm. You know, and so when that happens, immediately you have a, a, a situation or a scenario where the storytellers are taking themselves on. Mm. The one says something and the other one feels the other one forgot or left something out. Mm. And they take the story forward, which then allows Siabonga and Zona because this, this, this Zona Numboni, I just, you yeah, know, right. I never even knew her. Yeah. Right. Opry Powe, I, I directed a play this year, uh, um, which was about the meeting of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King um, that happened on the week that Ma Malcolm X was shot. Oh, and we did this play and I've, I've always wanted to direct the suit and I've always believed that I would love to see, Zola is the youngest actress ever to play to this play role. To play Tilly. Mm. Yeah, to play Tilly. Yeah. I've always wanted to, to have a young actress because for me it, just, it made sense that Philman is older and content. With, yeah. with, 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 with their lot. And she is young and ambitious. And she is, it's almost like they've arrived at the same station. 
He's taken his ticket and just torn it. And she still wants to go. She's still somewhere. saying, no, but my yes. journey's not done. Yes. And, and, and when you read the suit, a lot of people in the read the suit, immediately you feel for a man because you, the wife cheated. It's like, oh my God, why did yeah. you? But I wanted to get into Tilly. Why did she do it? And we worked with a psychosis that said she was unhappy in that mm. marriage. Mm. You know what I mean? And so she puts on everything to try and make Philemon happy. But there is a void inside her, mm. which is her own um, happiness. And then I decided when I staged it, uh, there's, there, there is a configuration in theater called the Travers, where the, audiences the can Travis. sit. Yeah, audiences can sit on two sides. Uh, audiences watch the play and they watch each other watching the play. Uh, okay. A sense of voyeurism yeah. that I wanted to 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 mm. um, to put in a homely feel that we wanted to to put in the piece that then allows. Lindani and 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 Andile and Mulif to just be these very I mean Lindani the moments when he walks he's inside their bedroom as he tells the story and with an idea that without the storytellers there is no story of Tilly and Philip. Mm. Has it always been done with the narrator? Yes, yes. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yes, there's always been a narrator, but we've just blown it up, um, 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 you know, and, and the, one of the things we're doing also that's never been done to the play is that we make Tilly storytell. As well. as well. Yeah, as well. So it kind of cuts yeah. to audience and yeah. you know, brings the audience in. Yeah, and then I brought in this, this amazing dancer um, called Lissedi, who is, who is her alter ego, who is her conscience, who is her nemesis, and the, she's always around her, but in movement. Oh, which wow. is another thing that hasn't been done. Oh, um, wow. to the, when you see Tilly, you see two Tillys. Is he always this passionate? <laughs> Very. Yeah. <laughs> is we is are it always <laughs> such a, a roller coaster to Indeed. be around him? Because it makes us feel like Tina, we are backwards now <laughs> because Sienna is far ahead. Because I'm <laughs> levitating just listening to him and I'm just like, why weren't you no, an actress? Actually, <laughs> yes, but that's what you need uh, uh, when you're being directed because it gets you where you need to be mm. um, um, in terms of the psychology of the play, the, the emotional levels of the play, the creative uh, 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 spaces mm. that you can travel. Um, we sit with audience yeah. like this mm. in the play and we actually interact with the audience yeah. in the play. So that's, those are the creative licenses that yeah. he has given himself. We just didn't play. want them to it's, sit it's, passively it's, and watch yes. the yes. I want audiences to be, to the, the, there's also a sense that they are an interesting foil themselves, that with, mm. with each actor that tells the story, they can go into the audience and say, but you know this too. You remember mm. when that happened, you, you mm. know, and- Oh my gosh, you kind and, of feel like an and, accomplice. You know, it's like you the one who made Tilly cheat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, Philemon, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I should have said to her, no, I was there with her <laughs> when she met him. And then, oh my word. Yeah, and yeah. also what we've done to the suit, the, the, the second I read it again, I, I, I then met with the designer. I wanted the suit. So you see the suit in the beginning, mm. like the suit that the guy was wearing and Zola does a thing with it and she exits. When the suit comes back, I've got a huge suit that is on a stick that has a, a hole on stage. It takes over it the takes house. Oh, it's the suit. You know, and, yeah, and, and awesome. the second he, f he finds her with a man cheating, he never sits on that bed again. He sits on, on the table, she sits on the bed, and you can see that there is now a clear separation. And one of the things I wanted to do also is that the, 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 in, 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 you know, most of the times when the suit is done, he Philemon walks in and the lover runs out. I wanted to create a love making scene with all the, the beautiful taste in the world. We've, he, for him to see a man. Deep and, in the throat with yes, his wife. with his wife. And, and so we, 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 we create this love making scene and she is in a gorgeous uh, um, nighty yes, lingerie. You know, and he walks in, he takes off his clothes and he's all over. And when he's, when he's he, he narrating, tasteful. talking, she's <laughs> lying like this and Taste. he's over tastefully done. Tastefully. Yes. <laughs> you know, but, but, but I wanted, I wanted, um, you know, I've been in a relationship with my woman for 21 years. Mm. You know, I wanted an, 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 an audience because I kept thinking, what will I do if I, if I could find, mm. you, you know, and, and, and wanted also to make Philemon not so stoic yeah. in the piece. You see him at moments, he can't even breathe. 
because he can't believe because she's doing this. From what I remember from reading it, Fulman did come across as a, even though she had wronged him by cheating, from word go, he just looked like a monster. And I was just like, the only time I felt vulnerability for him is when she's, you know, uh, uh, killed herself. Yeah. And he's holding and he's like, Tilly at the end. Yeah. It's the only time I felt like, you know, he'd been hurt by it. But otherwise he was very like, right, stoic yeah. and cold. And like, yeah. I'm going to keep you out of here because you can't ever get in again. Yeah. So I was thinking that if Philmon is all about mental torture, we need the before. And the before is him getting hurt and humiliated. Then he is adamant that he is going to humiliate. Oh. And that is why he makes oh. the suit stay there so that it's not his pain, it's her pain. Yeah. It's almost it's like you shame. brought the suit. It's her shame. I thought we were in, this was this utopian dream that we have, we're living in bliss. You bring this, even in the, at the party when, mm. when, when, when his character says, what's happening? He says, why didn't you ask my wife? She knows the fellow best. He, he refuses to take uh, um, um, ownership of the pain. She must hurt. Okay, we're going to take a quick ad break. I want to ask you something, and then you're going to tell us the answer afterwards. What has directing the suit taught you about yourself and you? What has narrating the suit taught you about yourself? We will be right back. <laughs> And welcome back to Real Talk with Anneli right here on ACBC3. The stage is yours. If there's a stage that will entertain and, and as you marvel at brilliant acting, it's got to be at the Market Theatre. Just days before they wrap it up, Sunday the 28th of May, you cannot miss out on this. Ken Timbers, the suit directed by this fellow here, my, my, <laughs> my, my fellow here. So I asked you before the break, James, that what has directing the suit taught you about yourself? The first thing, Anela, would be a, 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 a confirming to myself that the more you direct, the more difficult it gets. Oh, really? Yeah, it, it, it never gets easier. Um, um, and then the other thing is, is that we have a, a, a really an amazing body of work in this country that we need to find these stories and, and tell them. Because what is amazing about Stories like the suit, like yeah. the suitcase, the like Casey Mozitzi's, the efficacy of a prayer. They, they are set in the 50s and yet they've got nothing to do with apartheid. They're about humanity. They, there's a universality. I could go to Uzbekistan or to Ireland or to Belgium in Antwerp and direct this play with, with Flemish actors. Yeah. It's about a man and a woman. And so, and so it, 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 it has taught me that sometimes when we look back at heritage pieces, they really are that. They, they are, are heritage, that heritage pieces. Mm. Like you could get to London and find that the hottest ticket will be an Arthur Miller, a view mm. from the bridge. Because these stories need to be seen by, by our kids. I've got a boy who's 26 to be seen by our kids, to be seen by a, a new audience and to celebrate the literary giants that wow. we have in, in this country. And that is why I kept saying to the actors, before we even get to major acting, we have to speak Ken Temba, who was a major in English. And the way he weaves words together, he was a, he was a wordsmith word of note. Mm, yeah. There are moments when you don't need to act. You need to just say the line the way he said it, because nobody says it that way but Ken Temba. Mm. Ah. Wow. I'm about mm. to vote for you. <laughs> <laughs> what has it taught you about yourself, Lindani? Hey, man, mm. you know, that having gone through the story, it's, it's understanding that we need to be our own psychologists, our own doctors and our own therapists, because mm. the way by which this man deals with the situation mm. is, is unique to him. And I think it's, it's his way of just uh, finding some sort of revenge, right, I, I, in his own way. But I think we, we need to learn to be our own doctors and psychologists mm -hmm. and, and therapists that, that uh, we find our own help mm -hmm. to deal with things that are, um, um, uh, drive us to mm -hmm. even, you know, death. Mm. To, a, to a point, you know, the, it's a tragic story, this. It's really a tragic story. Um, but the way it is told, it is told excitingly. It's just that it leaves you with such pain at the end. Yeah. And, and so it, it, it's something that, for me, um, God has got to be right at the center of me if I would meet 
such a situation. Uh, <laughs> he, he needs to guide me. Everyone, he needs everyone to has guide a take. Me. What did you do? What would you yeah, do? Yeah, exactly. No, I'll, what, I'll how would you? I, it wouldn't happen. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it actually so, makes us ask ourselves a lot of questions yeah, about ourselves. So you have a point we, about being we, our own psychologists. I've got to exile. I think that's one of the things I've done. Just run away. <laughs> <laughs> we are never, running Zulu, just running. You'd never see me again. <laughs> so because you've got so many elements that are James-isms, if I can call mm -hmm. them that, that you put into the, you know, the current running of, of the suit at the Market Theatre, do you find yourself during the run going home and just reading the play again for yourself just to go back to the to, to its default setting, its foundation, it, it, you're not in its purest form without your um, injection in it. Oh, yes. Oh. I, I constantly am reading, and Lindan will tell you I still pop in and give notes. So, so that, because also, one of the things for me that I deal, I, I deal with being the artistic director of the market is, is I am so obsessed with excellence on our stages. It's like an obsession, my team will tell you. At a, I, I'm hands on on everything at the market, you know, and 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 I keep saying to my team, us who are the present custodians of this vision called the market, we need to mollycoddle it and care for it. And so there is nothing in when a director play, nothing just happens because he, he, I look for every breath in the piece. Uh. And, and you know, um, I mean, the next thing that I'm doing now, I'm directing a piece uh, which is, is a, based on a true story on the night Muhammad Ali won his first championship. Before he was Muhammad Ali, he spends the night with, with, with um, <laughs> a, um, Malcolm X <laughs> and Sam Cooke <laughs> in That's a hotel in Miami. Sam Cooke? So I'm looking for actors Whoa. now and things. I obsess, I just, I, 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 I believe in excellence. I don't like things done um, Willy nilly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and you, when you find me at the market, you won't even tell that uh, I'm the artistic that I'm on the ground with people and whatever. I just want, and I want people to speak with such eloquence about what we do at the market and, and what drives us. And mm -hmm. so, yes, I direct a thing, I look at it, and I look again, and I go, oh, I think I was wrong, let's go here. Yeah, and mm. you know, so, um, so, so you, you, you're not quickly sort of content with it. You know, you have to, you know, and it happens also because one of my passions in life, I'm a cook, I love cooking. And so, um, you know, you put a tarragon <laughs> on a thing and then you think oh maybe it's safe. I just got hungry. You know, you know, <laughs> I so just got angry. You keep un uh, you scratching the surface to James, say, well. James, SABC3 wants to play the news <laughs> and I can't be late, but I could listen to you speak forever. <laughs> You are saying something about dates. Uh, you might extend, you might not. We might extend, we will announce tomorrow. Okay, so for awesome. now, let's behave awesome. like you're not extending. <laughs> yeah, so that we can all go this week. Yes. Sure. Yeah, Bonnie, you see what I'm about saying? It, yeah. James yeah. Lindani, thank yeah. you so much for your time. What an honor, what a pleasure to spend time with these distinguished gentlemen. A big thank you to our first guest, Tebe Ikalafeng, and then James Ngobo and Lindani Nkosi. Uh, it's a good night from us there at the Market Theatre until the 28th of May. It's Ken Timbers, The Suit. You want to go out and check it out. Tomorrow, however, when we come back, we'll be talking about what it means to be transgender in South Africa. It is a conversation that has to happen. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.